Good morning, good morning, good morning. Welcome to another edition of Inspiration Wednesdays. Today is Wednesday, um, September 19th, 2019. It's our pleasure, it's our privilege to be here with you right now to worship God in spirit and truth. It has been quite some time since we've been together. Amen. I have missed you. I hope and pray that you have missed me as much as I have missed you. Uh, I tell you, uh, these prayer conference calls, they are my midweek charge up. These are the calls that uh, the ministry that God uses to encourage me uh, during the weekend. I hope and pray that God is using you to encourage you during the week also. And so with that said, we are going to begin. We're going to jump in. We're going to trust and believe that our God has something uh, marvelous, something wonderful planned for us today that all we have to do is, like we said, continue to trust him, continue to believe him, continue to pursue him, continue to seek him, and all our God would do the amazing, do the incredible, just do the outstanding, do the miraculous in our lives to the point where we will have testimonies that rival the greatest stories ever contained in the Bible. I believe God is still on the throne. I believe he's still alive and I believe it's up to us. Uh, to pursue him so that God can do what he wants to do in our lives and get the glory in it. Amen. Amen. Let's do this. Let's open up with a word of prayer as we normally do. Uh, and then we're going to move into our devotional this morning. Amen. Dear Father God, creator of the heavens and the earth, God, we come to you right now, right this very instant, God, praying, God, that your Holy Spirit will rest, rule, and abide in this call here this morning. God, we pray that, God, you would do the amazing in our presence, that, God, you would do the uh, uh, the unbelievable in our presence, that, God, you would do uh, uh, just the miraculous so that, God, we come to know you, not only in the freedom uh, uh, of our sins and the forgiveness of our sins, but God, we come to know you uh, through the exercise of our faith, through the trusting and the believing that God, you are truly Lord God Almighty, and that God, you are working things out on our behalf. Father God, bless those who are going to share today. God, give them the strength, give them the courage, give them everything they need, God, so they're able to articulate uh, during this call their prayer requests, their praise reports, their prayers, their words of encouragement, their uh, testimonies. Father God, we also pray during this time, God, if there's someone that's going through something, God, that God, you would encourage them, God, to speak up, speak out. God, let them know that whatever it is, God, it's not a small thing. It's not a tiny thing. It's not a little thing that God, you are doing uh, uh, some big things in their lives and that God, you want to take whatever it is that is keeping them from trusting you completely, from serving you fully and operating wholeheartedly in faith and that you want to transform that thing you want to change that thing you want to make it so that God they're able to be the disciples and stewards that you call them to be now Father God continue to bless us continue to watch over us continue to do what only you can do as we move forward in our call dear Father God we love you and we thank you and we anticipate what you're going to do today it's in your son's mighty matchless marvelous magnificent name that we do pray Amen. Amen, everyone. Amen. Praise God. If you have your Bibles with you this morning or you have your electronic device with a Bible app on it, turn with me to the Gospel of Luke. Amen. Our scriptorial focus this morning comes from Luke chapter 18, verses 6 through 8. Amen. Luke chapter 18, verses 6 through 8. Eight. Amen. I will read this morning from Eugene Peterson's translation entitled The Message. It reads as follows. Then the master said, do you hear what that judge, corrupt as he is, is saying? So what makes you think God won't step in and work justice for his chosen people who continue to cry out for help? Won't he stick up for them? I assure you he will. He will not drag his feet, but how much 
of that kind of persistent faith will the Son of Man find on earth when he returns? Thus far, the Word of God. The title of our devotional to this morning is The Definition of the Quintessential Christian, subtitled Persistence. The Definition of the Quintessential Christian, subtitled Persistence. On May 30th, 2008, God wrapped up a personal trial and tribulation that I had dealt with since April 2004. For four years, I had wrestled with a particular devil as it sought to kill me professionally. I had done nothing wrong. In fact, such attack was based on nothing I even did. Rather, this predicament rose, arose in my life simply because I was obedient to the will of God. Yep, that's right. I was attacked while following God's lead. As much as this one truth is a tempting diversion away from the topic of our instant devotional, it is a topic that God will address on another day and in a different devotional. However, in retrospect, I now see that this attack came upon my life exactly because who I am in Christ Jesus. When this trial and tribulation began, I had begun to I had be, began or begun to start seriousing up, becoming very serious about ministry. I stopped operating from the stance of lip service faith and started trusting God completely. I opened myself up to the spiritual reality that serving God required absolute reliance upon Him through faith. For four years, I wrestled not only with this particular trial and tribulation, but also with my human desire for freedom. I wanted release. I wanted to be free from this ordeal, and I wanted this freedom instantly. I shared with a friend this ordeal and the praise report that God had, had the praise report that God had ended it. And reflecting on what I shared with him, that friend stated to me that most people in my situation would have given up after the first two weeks. They definitely would not have made it through four years of persecution and ordeal. That friend, you know what? That friend was absolutely right because there were days when I felt like giving up. I cannot tell us all how many times I had to hold back the tears of hurt and anger. But the one thing that kept me strong through this four-year battle was the voice of the Lord God telling me, don't worry, be strong, I'm standing with you. It was the Lord God himself that kept me going. It was he that enabled me to possess just a tiny bit of persistent faith. Understand me when I use the term persistent faith. I'm talking about that kind of faith that forces you to continue to put one foot in front of the other in spite of having neither the physical strength nor the mental desire or willpower to do so. I'm talking about that kind of faith that continues to whisper in your right ear that things aren't really as bad as they seem, even though your physical senses and your mind beg to differ. I'm talking about that kind of faith that refuses to give up when all around you has given in and given away. I'm talking about persistence faith, a faith that refuses to give up in spite of all evidence to the contrary. Persistent faith. In our past to devotionals, we have walked with God as he has revealed to us the definition or his definition of the quintessential Christian. He has exposed us one concept at a time to the essential makeup of what is a quintessential Christian. We started with the Christian who operates from a position of unquestioned obedience. We proceeded forward to the Christian who possesses the integrity of God. Now this week, our journey with God takes a momentary pause at the spiritual concept of persistence. You know, it's one thing to live by faith, but it's quite another thing to actually operate in it. I believe by faith that God resurrected Jesus from the grave and raised him to glory as the Christ, as his Christ. I think and want to believe that most Christians also believe this truth. However, I have noticed 
that what we say we believe about God through faith does not always translate as very easily when we are forced to operate in faith in our personal lives. You know, it's easy to claim faith. In claiming faith, we're doing nothing other than claiming ownership over a thing. It's no different from claiming that the car I drive is my car. The problem arises for most of us when faith moves from being a person, place, or thing and becomes action in our lives. Let me give us an example of this. Many of us have memorized Romans 8, chapter, chapter 8, verse 37, that says, No, in all things we are more than conquerors through him who loves us. We claim the identity of being conquerors as a title and profess it as victory over spiritual advers- or over our spiritual adversary. However, the same us seem incapable of acting like conquerors in our personal lives. The slightest hint of trouble appears in our lives and we instantaneously succumb to the perception of defeat and demise. We lose our jobs and immediately we act as if all hope is lost. We get sick or develop a health, a medical condition and instantly we act as if we are minutes away from death. We find ourselves in a financial predicament and without falter, we assume the position of economic losers. Life continues to demonstrate that what we say about faith is not always congruent with how we act out our faith. You know what? The amazing thing is that oftentimes God is forced to use non-Christians to teach and reiterate to us Christians how to operate in persistent faith. I read newspaper articles and magazine articles as well as books all the time and I read them from from a wide assortment of personals of persons who are professionally and economically successful. Many times the first thing I immediately notice about these persons or these authors is that many of them don't know the first thing about God. At least that is how these written works present these authors. Now, I don't know these persons personally, but in their publications, they thank and acknowledge everyone in this world but God for their personal accomplishments and successes. Without any information to the contrary, these same authors seem to be unaware that it was God that enabled them to be persistent. It was God that enabled them to accomplish their goals in spite of the difficulties or challenges that they encountered along the way. What a pity it is that the model of persistence that the world acknowledges and relies upon is a model not created and utilized by Christians. We're supposed to be the standard bearers. We represent God as his called and consecrated servants, yet we have been and are currently unable to demonstrate to the world what faith, particularly persistent faith, looks like. To help us understand how critical this spiritual concept of persistence and persistent faith is to the quintessential Christian, God directs our attention to Luke chapter 18, verses 1 through 8. There we find Christ Jesus sharing with his, his disciples the parable of the persistent widow. This widow has one goal and one goal only that she desperately wanted to accomplish. She was determined to acquire justice. Some unidentified third party have violated her legal rights. As a result, she was determined to have a local judge vindicate her and her vindicate her in her legal situation. The main problem that stood between this woman and the accomplishment of her goal was that this local judge was unjust. He didn't care for God or for the people. And because he was so unjust, he refused to give this woman the legal relief she desperately sought. But no matter how often the local judge denied her justice, the widow kept coming back. She was persistent. She was determined not to let the local judge stand as an obstacle to accomplishing her goal. This woman was so persistent that she eventually wore the local judge out. Her persistence 
literally forced him to give her what she desired so that he could have one moment of peace. Good morning, Dr. Eileen Madison. Good morning, uh, Sister Kimberly. We see you on Facebook. Amen. I remember seeing the Disney movie Aladdin while I was in undergraduate school. In the movie Aladdin, there's a character named Yago. Yago is a parrot who is the lead henchman for the movie's antagonist, Jafar. In a particular scene, another movie character comments on Yago's persistence. Yago's response was, persistence, you'll be surprised how far it'll get you. Good morning, Sister Angeline on Facebook this morning. The widow's persistence got her the legal justice and vindication she sought from the local judge against the unidentified third party. Imagine what we could accomplish on behalf of God if we were as persistent as this widow. What good could we achieve if we were just that persistent? How far along would God, God's kingdom be here on earth if we operated from persistent faith? I truly believe that many of the predicaments that affect us negatively and hold us back will be virtually eliminated from our, from our lives if we would just act with some cognizable amount of persistence. Heartbreak, not a problem because we're persistently moving forward. Rejection. Doesn't matter because we're persistently striving for it. Loss of job, loss of friends, loss of status can't stop us because we keep keeping on persistently. Sickness won't derail us because we're persistently marching on to Zion. The beautiful, beautiful Zion, the beautiful city of God. Persistence makes the difference. Many times God blesses us simply because we're persistent. I mean, it's not because we're so so awesome, we're so great, we're so uh, innocent, we're so righteous. Many times God blesses us because we, we, we refuse to give up, we refuse to give in, that we refuse to believe that whatever we're up against today is the end of our lives, the end of our ministries, the end of our purpose, the end of our callings. We believe that there's yet more for us to accomplish, more for us to experience, and God honors us many times by literally pushing us into the next season of our, of our destiny simply because of persistence. Think of persistence in this manner. Our spiritual adversary is persistent in its attempts to prevent us from realizing God's express will, not only for our lives, but also for the lives of those connected to us. Good morning, Sister uh, Bell. It's good to see you. Uh, day after day, after day, our adversary consistently throws hurdles and obstacles into our past with the intent to both silence our praise of God and to prevent us from serving him. The last thing that the devil wants to see is us serving God completely and in an unfettered fashion. It is, as de it is as determined to shut us down as the sun is determined to rise in the morning. And guess what? Even if we defeat the adversary in battle today, it is not going to give up and leave us alone permanently. It is going to retreat for the night. It's going to lick its wounds. It's going to strategize. And guess what? It's going to begin a new attack, a spiritual warfare, warfare in the morning, just as sure as we open our eyes for a new day. Now, I wonder where we would be spiritually in terms of faith and in terms of our relationships with God if we were as persistent and dogmatic in our faith as the enemy is in his attack. Wouldn't we be much further along than we are now? Yeah, that realization of just how far persistent faith will get us surprised me too. Amen? Amen. Here, let's have a word of prayer over our devotional here this morning. Let's pray that God is speaking to someone 
who uh, he has been calling to accomplish a specific task or to fulfill a specific objective. And we have been sitting on the sideline thinking that for whatever reason that we don't have the ability, the resources, the information, the training to do it, that many times God is saying, just be patient. Be, be persistent in your determination and your exercising your faith and watch me accomplish the impossible. Uh, amen. Through uh, your life. So here, let us pray over our devotional this morning. Dear Father God, creator of the heavens and the earth. God, we thank you, God, for the reminder to be persistent. To God, not give up when we try and the first time we may not succeed, the first time we may fail, or God, it may not work our way. God, to be persistent. God, uh, uh, Thomas Edison told a reporter once that he didn't fail making, uh, he didn't fail 2,000 times making the light bulb, rather he learned 2,000 different ways of not making a light bulb. In other words, he was seeking that one chance, that one opportunity, that one success to turn a dream into reality. God, it doesn't matter how many no's we encounter, God. It only matters that we get one yes from you. And that changes everything. So, Father God, help us as we go through today to remember to be persistent. It doesn't matter what happened yesterday, last week, last month, last year. Today is a new day. We've never done what we're doing here today. And so, God, we pray that today you allow us to meet faith head on and to be persistent. That, God, you allow us to achieve. You allow us to accomplish. You allow us to grow. You allow us to increase. You allow us to step into that next realm, that next season, that next position of destiny that you have, have for us, God. And we pray, God, that as we do it, God, someone else sees persistent faith modeled for them. Someone else sees how easy it is for them to walk in faith, to live by faith, to think by faith, to speak in faith, to act in faith. That, God, someone else is given a reminder just how easy it is to be people of faith. And that, God, you end up getting glory. Now, Father God, it's time for us to switch gears. It's time for us to uh, to transition from the devotional section of our prayer conference call to the prayer section of our conference call. God, we know there are people that are going through things, that are dealing with things, who are wrestling with things, God, that are uh, fighting with some things, God. And God, they need your assistance. They need your help immediately, God. And God, they want you to do the incredible and the impossible in their lives. Now, God, as we exercise the faith that that widow had, that pursued that unjust local judge, that, God, you would be as faithful to respond to us, that you would take the subject matter of our prayer requests and start transforming our tests into our testimonies and our messes into our messages. Father God, we love and we thank you for what you're going to do on this call this morning. It's in your son's mighty matchless, marvelous, and magnificent name that we do pray. Amen. Amen. Amen, everyone. Amen. 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 God is good. God is faithful. God is amazing. God is incredible. And if you were, are looking for a reminder that I challenge you to look in the mirror, you have no further to go than to look in the mirror for just how good and amazing he is. He has kept you, kept us. So let me tell you how I know he's kept you, kept us. Yesterday morning, as I was fulfilling my duties, uh, to as a pastor to my congregation, I had not left visiting one of my members uh, a good, I mean, a good 30 to 40 minutes. I had not left them that for that long before they called me back to the, ho to the hospital because that member passed away. That member died. And what I'm saying to you is, 
we we praise God for those who die in Christ because I know this member died believing in Christ because he was one of my faithful members. He was one of my members. I always showed up for everything. And one of my members that kept telling me, you keep believing uh, God, pastor, he going to work this thing out. So I know that my member is good. But the fact is he's not here anymore. And his family, his mother, his sister, his brother, his sons, his grandchildren, they all are mourning his loss. But God thought it not robbery to keep you and I here to get here today. So let me do this. Be before anyone else jumps in with a prayer request, let me throw put all of us on our virtual on the virtual altar this morning and pray for all of us this morning. Because you know, we have been going through, we have been dealing with life and life has got us to the point where it looks like we're just barely making it, that we're just barely surviving. And that really, if the if the next storm comes around when it does, it's going to knock us off our purchase. It's going to knock us off and it's going to take us out. That's a lie from the devil. You are a survivor. You are a victor. You, you, are, vi you are a victor. You are more than a conqueror through Christ Jesus uh, that's, that strengthens you and that's in you. So here, let me do this. Let me put everyone on our virtual altar, no matter what you're going through, so that so that God will speak to you and speak to your mind as well as your spirit that what you're going through is not the end. It's not the final say-so until he says it's the final say-so. Dear Father God, creator of the heavens and the earth, God, we come to you right this very instant, God. Thank you, God, for being our constant source of strength, our continual and consistent reminder that, God, you have all things in your hands, that these little three and four year old babies have a better testimony than we do. Because God, they sing with such joy. He's got the whole world in his hands. And they sing this song. And they go through the different verses, God. And they are sing singing it with pride, with joy, with happiness. And then here we are, God, as adults. As Christian disciples and stewards who know you through the full parts of our sin, yet we still believe that the, if the latest challenge, the latest predicament, the latest tribulation is going to be our end, is going to be our demise, is going to be our downfall. Father God, you didn't make us to be so weak and so fickle and so spiritually inept. God, you made us to be more than conquerors. You made us to be victors. You made us, God, to be winners. Father God, you have already declared that this is a fixed fight. That we know that the enemy is already defeated. We know, God, that he gets cast into the lake of, of hell, the lake of fire. So, God, why are we sitting here letting that little booger try to convince us that he has more power than you do? That he has more wherewithal. That he has more knowledge than you do, God. He, he can't even see what our futures hold. He only gets the glimpse that we get. And God, you know everything. God, you are our own point with everything. And so, Father God, regardless what it is, God, we're going to stand up in that thing with some faith. We're going to stand up in that thing with some confidence. We're going to stand up in that thing with some trust. And we're going to believe without doubting that, God, you're not only going to bring us through it, you're going to bring us over it. That, God, you're going to give us a testimony. That, God, you're going to give us a witness. That, God, you're going to give us a powerful uh, 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 story to tell about how God you got off your throne you came down here with us and God you brought us through the tribulation personally yeah. Father God thank you in advance for what you're going to do thank you in advance for how you're going to do it thank you in advance for even choosing us to be recipients of your love your grace and your mercy Father God forgive us for the days when we doubted you when we fail to stand on faith, when we fail to trust you, forgive us, God. God, we are so busy to pray for the big sins, but God, let us not forget the little sin of doubt, disbelief, and, not, and distrust. Help us to remember, God, those three little sins are as big a sin as the big ones. And forgive us, God, for engaging in those sins. 
Help us, God, to transform and transmogrify not just our lives, but the lives of those, God, that we're connected to, to those, God, that we have influence, those, God, that we have connections and relationships so that, God, together, both them and us, them and we, we may be able to walk hand in hand in faith to that place that you are taking us all to. Father God, we love you, God, and we thank you, God, and we honor you, God. It's in your son's mighty, matchless, marvelous, and magnificent name that we do pray. Amen. 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 Praise Amen. God. Amen. Amen. Good morning, Pastor Al. Good morning. Is this, is this Dr. Ashland? Dr. Ashlyn Curry, how are you this morning? I'm doing good, love. I'm doing good. I mean, I, it's it's so good to hear your voice. I hear Sister Lisa's voice and Sister Nancy's voice. Tell me how I can pray for you, love. Well, 